Today I've got some Tonnage 3.6 amp hour, 22.2 uh, .2 volt uh, batteries, 8 of them. And all I'm doing today is uh, I'm taking all the tops off them. I'm going to solder four of them in, uh, into one p big pack and uh, the other four into another one. And then it'll all be taped up uh, and it'll have my old configuration with uh, the series jumper and whatnot to charge it. But I've added a, I'll be adding a safety feature so that if I ever do connect up wrong, I'm not going to destroy my connectors. Like on this battery, I just uh, put some small fuses on on one of the connectors. So now I'll just have to replace all the fuses if I, um, I make a stupid mistake of connecting the thing up wrong. Uh, so that that should hopefully be a lot better. Now the reason I got all these batteries was uh, on Friday. Me and a friend will be having a race to see who to see who could be the first to 20 mile an hour or to to some point it will be a, a short distance race. Uh, my electric bike versus a Ford Focus. So uh, I'm not feeling all that confident, but uh, I decided to get a much bigger battery to see how I'll get on. So I'm just going to get it all built up. Um, and I'll just use, I'll just uh, cut the ends off these and then use these to connect each of the cells up in parallel and then use these 10 gauge cables that come with them to solder up the the main positive and negative of the parks in, in parallel and that's going to give us about 600 watt hours of battery at 44.4 uh, volts and um, so We'll uh, give that a test after it's finished. The, the cells all arrived from Hobby King, and they were they were all pretty unbalanced. But um, the lowest cell I did see was a uh, 3.75. Um, they're usually meant to be about 3.8 when you receive them, but uh, that's not too bad. If you've got a cell that's sitting at like uh, three volts or less, then you've got a faulty battery there, and you should uh, contact Hobby King and um, displaying the warranty code and it connected up to a voltmeter just to show them that it's faulty and then they'll send you out a replacement or give you some store credit to buy a new one. The thing I would have liked to have done is to be able to take these batteries apart completely to split them up into their single cells but um, you should not ever do that because the batteries that come pre-assembled um, some, some of the tabs and um, these two here are actually spot welded together because one tab is nickel and one tab is aluminium and the aluminium one you will not be able to solder to um, so unfortunately we'll have to do it a slightly more awkward way but you'll essentially be achieving the same sort of result although it will not be quite as neat um, and these are just all going to be made into one big pack I originally intended them to fit inside this ok the, the camera ran out of memory there but as I was saying I wanted them to fit inside the, inside this and based on the sizes on Hobby King they would uh, fit with just a little bit of space left over but uh, unfortunately the batteries are actually um, a little bit wider than it said on the website so uh, I would be able to get um, six of the batteries in this but then that's not as good because I'm losing capacity there so uh, this case I'll probably just have to sell on eBay or something or maybe use it for another electric bike because um, I ordered it for the eBay seller uh, Golden Union 88 I think it was for China and the reason I ordered it was because it's meant to be exactly like my old bike batteries the exact same case style as that but I received something that was totally different um, so I was a bit disappointed there but I will use it for something maybe but um We've got these all assembled now into, into a pack. Um, all I need to do is uh, put the jumper leads over each from each cell. So we've got a negative there and a positive there. Um, so they'll just all have to go over like this and then get soldered in. It shouldn't be too bad. And then I'll uh, have to connect every single interconnect in parallel as well with uh, with some leftover wire, I might use these, I don't know. These uh, connectors are actually quite useful, so I might actually keep them. But uh, I'll get on with that just now. So here I've just got some 
tin lead solder. That's not actually the best stuff to use for this, but it does work. It's because it kind of goes all oxidised on the tip very quickly. So all I do is, and um, we've got our wire here, um, and I just uh, melt some of the flux because it's really cold out here. The flux is just goes almost like a brick, and then I just dip the end of the wire in. Then. Uh, if I could, uh, I'll usually uh, clean this on my fiberglass mat, try and get some of the dirt off the tip, and then just try and get some solder on it. You have to get it um, completely saturated with solder, and just watch yourself because the wire will get quite hot in your hands pretty quickly so you'll have to put it down soon yeah that's got a decent bit of solder on it so we'll let that cool and then I'll just uh, solder it onto the battery now for this sort of stuff you're going to want to use at least an 80 watt solder iron uh, because you you want a good powerful solder iron that's going to uh, heat the solder up really quickly so you're not putting too much heat into the batteries because that could possibly damage them because I have uh, destroyed some cylindrical cells doing that um, I think a bit of heat got into them and then it ended up uh, the electrolyte started coming out the end of it I never went on fire or anything like that but uh, uh, it could have been worse but you'll usually know quite quickly if your battery is leaking because it's sort of kind of like a funny sweet sort of smell that comes out of them I've no idea what the chemical is that's inside them but um, I wouldn't imagine you'd want to uh, breathe that in there we go that's that one soldered down so I'll just have to repeat along each side for positive and negative and that's finally the first one finished. Uh, I just uh, reused one of the balance connectors and put an XD60 connector on there. Um, which is fine enough for the bike I've got, but if I had something bigger then that would probably have to become an Anderson connector uh, to take the higher current. But should do for 40 amps that my bike takes. And I've just used quite thick wires for the balancing. Um, so that should hopefully make the balancing a bit more accurate. So all I'm doing now is covering all the connections and hot melt glue to just make sure that they can't possibly short out against anything. And then I'm going to heat up the glue even more with um, a heat gun and then tape the whole thing up with uh, some duct tape here. 